we start off at a point which is not at equilibrium where the cobweb model uh, doesn't get us to the equilibrium. Right, so what must happen is that we can we can get it from these equations. Let's press focus on the price. So somehow we want PT to eventually reach P star over time. Okay, so we have to look at the term. So there's two terms here, this plus second term. First term, P star does not depend on time, so there's no point looking at it. This second term is made up of a product. P0 minus P star does not depend on time, so it just remains constant over time. So it's only this guy here which changes over time. Yeah. So when does PT, how does, when is it case that PT will reach P star? It must mean that over time this number gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So you're timesing a number that's smaller and smaller and smaller by a number. So this second term eventually tends to zero. Well, when does that happen? That will happen if the number B is less than the number D. Okay. And then if B is less than D, it must mean that this fraction is less than 1. And any number, which is a fraction uh, less than 1 to the power of T, will tend to 0. Try it on your calculator. Try putting 0.1 to the power of set T to 2, and then set T to 10, set T to 100. You'll see that that figure tends to 0. OK, that's the first thing. Importantly, note that because we said that B and D are bigger than 0, Therefore, it's always going to be a form minus a, a number to the power of t. Minus a number to the power of t for, means that this number here to the power of t is going to fluctuate positive, negative, positive, negative. Right? Say negative, say this is negative 0.1 to the power of t is 1. That's negative 1. Set t is 2, negative 1 to the power of 2. It's going to be a positive number. So this thing is going to be fluctuating between positive and negative and that precisely that, that equation precisely describes what's happening here positive and then negative positive negative above equilibrium below equilibrium yeah because here you you will be adding on a number to equilibrium then you'll be subtracting a number from the equilibrium so you'll be above the line and then below the line above below below above below and so on okay Similarly, with quantity, because you can see it's exactly the same term there. So because that's important, let's state that of sort of stability condition, meaning that if I'm off equilibrium, that I, the Cobweb model will get me to the equilibrium over time. So here's the stability condition. Stability condition is if, if the figure B is less than D. Uh, but um, that's very technical. That's not you know, what What heck does that mean? Let's translate to something where, which we understand in terms of, well since the, both of these are to do with the slopes of supply and demand, what this actually means, if we look here, if we ignore the negative sign, that the slope of the inverse supply will be steeper than the slope of the inverse demand. In other words, in terms of a picture, this here slope is steeper than this here slope, uh, ignoring the negative sign. In other words, the S line is steeper than the demand this demand set line. Supply set line is steeper than demand set line. S steeper than D. To convince you of that, let's do a case where S is not steeper than D. I'm sure you'd be interested in doing that. I asked my, some of my students to go home and do it. I don't know how many of you have actually bothered. Okay, so here is a case where the demand set here is steeper than the supply. Yeah. So let's try doing the same story of the cobweb model. Same my price, initial price is here. P0. So this is what I want. He's going to supply D1. Well, God, that just hits there, doesn't it? Okay. Q1. And then this one, demand set. Oops, he's going to see. Aha, uh -huh, doesn't even meet, does it? If it does meet, it's going to be off. It's going to be off the first quadrant. It's going to be into the negative, which does not make sense. Negative quantity. So there you go. In fact, if uh, I had drawn it so it's slightly a bit more steeper, then you can see that the thing actually would diverge. In such a case, we say that the equilibrium is unstable. 
doesn't mean that the equilibrium doesn't exist. It does exist because it's right here. It's just that the cobweb model doesn't kind of describe, it's not the right mechanism to describe um, movement to that. So in other words, um, we would think that the cobweb model would just be something which is momentary and then both people on the supply side and demand side will realize that it's not getting them to a equilibrium and then change the mechanism act differently in other words you know because uh, people in the market aren't stupid they act in such a way that uh, they get the best for themselves so eventually uh, if there is a equilibrium both sides will find it but they wouldn't behave according to the cobweb model yeah. Good, so we're finally done. We've said what the cobweb model is, we've described how it works, we've just said that it doesn't always, uh, it's not always the right mechanism to get us to equilibrium. And then finally to say that, like with all these kinds of economic things, we start off with very, very simple supply and demand sets, here being straight lines. But just like for the static case, we can have a nonlinear, or we say for example quadratic supply or demand curves. Okay, so this cobweb model can um, describe cases as well for the nonlinear case of supply and demand. Okay, so that's it. Hope that's been. Hope that sheds more light on the cobweb model.